Are you intrigued by images like this? this or this hi my friends how are you doing today i will walk you through the installation of automatic 1111 afterwards i will guide you through its basic settings later in the video i will tell you how to get my free prompt guide navigate to github.com slash automatic 1111 stable diffusion web ui the official documentation suggests to use Python 3.10.6. We will use Python 3.10.11 instead to benefit from the latest security updates. During installation, check the box for Add Python to Path. Next on the list is Git, which enables an easy download and update of Automatic 11.11. Simply follow the installation by clicking Next many, many times. This will take a couple of clicks. The default settings are fine, by the way. Now let's prepare the installation location for Automatic 11.11. Open your Windows File Explorer and create a new folder where you want Automatic 11.11 to live in. Inside the new folder, access the command window. Navigate to the address bar on the top, type CMD and press Enter. Now go back to the web page and click on the code button. After that, click on the clipboard icon. This will copy the repository URL. Head back to the command prompt window, type git clone, paste the copied URL right after and hit enter. Once cloning is complete, your folder should resemble the following. Now locate the web UI user batch file. You can do this with the text editor of your choice. We will use some command line arguments to improve our setup. Dash dash xformas accelerates our rendering process. If you own an NVIDIA GPU, that is. Dash dash auto launch opens a new browser window as soon as Automatic 11.11 is loading. Dash dash no half VAE is essential if you plan on using SDXL. If you forget to include this, this could lead to VRAM issues. Now, in a new line, write git pull. This checks for updates each time you start Automatic 11.11. The only thing missing now is the model. Head over to Civit AI and download a model you like. Click on models and choose a checkpoint based on the demo images that you like. Be sure to download a file ending on Safe Tensor and stay clear of Pickle Tensor. Safe Tensor files are secure against system tampering. I think we need to clarify what the difference is between Stable Diffusion 1.5 and SDXL. Stable Diffusion 1.5 is widely used and favored by the community. While there is a Stable Diffusion version 2.1, it's not commonly used. Most people didn't like the safer work restrictions that came with that model. SDXL promised to be a superior user-friendly successor. While it is cool, it currently feels like it's not quite there yet. Hence, in this tutorial we will focus on SD 1.5. So, when selecting a model, make sure it inherits from SD 1.5. My topics are Ref Animated, for animated or semi-realistic imagery. I also like Cyber Realistic for a more realistic touch. Once downloaded, put the model in the model slash stable diffusion directory. Now let's get Automatic 11.11 up and running. Execute the web UI user batch file. Be patient, the initial setup could take quite some time. I encountered a hiccup where Automatic 11.11 failed to install Xformas for three times in a row. If that happens, just restart. If everything's set up correctly, you are welcomed by the following interface. Let's delve into some basics. Right here you will find the prompt window. It's your gateway to creativity. Begin by crafting the scene description. For instance, image of a grumpy cat drinking tea. Either hit the generate button directly or press Ctrl and enter. And voila, the result is already amusing. It's beneficial to be more specific. So let's add enemy style hand drawn 2D. Generating again will now yield a completely different set of images as you can observe. Almost even more important is what you don't want in the image. For this, go down into the negative section here and type 3D render photorealistic human hand. Now press Ctrl Enter and after a little while you can see how the negative prompts have influenced our image. Let's give it another go. Girl sitting on a bench in winter wearing coat drinking hot chocolate. The results look fantastic. We will delve into refining prompts in a bit. 
feeling a bit lost in what to prompt in your AI image generation? Then I've got just the thing for you. My absolute beginner's guide to prompting. This comprehensive guide is packed with over 7,900 words of expert advice, more than 40 example images and renderings. Every single prompt is detailed for clarity. And it contains 37 pages. You can get a sneak peek of the guide for free. Just head over to my Patreon and grab your free copy. See you there. In the realm of stable diffusion, image creation comes with a notably noisy or indistinct image. Here's where sampling steps and sampling method come into play. Think of these as steps, where the system tries to make the image clearer by reducing noise. Sampling method refers to the specific technique employed in each step to mitigate the noise. As the steps advance, the image sharpens. Beware, increasing the steps can reduce generation speed. I won't delve into Hyres Fix and the Refiner. Hyres Fix is not part of my follow-up workflow and the Refiner is specific to certain SDXL models. If you need a good workflow, I suggest you watch this video next when you are finished here. Parameters like width and height are self-explanatory. For SD 1.5, a resolution of 512 by 512 to 768 by 768 is ideal. Going higher than that can lead to image distortions. Now onto batch count and batch size. Batch count refers to the number of iterations or runs the process will go through. The batch size denotes the number of images rendered simultaneously during each run. For instance, with a batch count of 2 and a batch size of 8, Automatic 1111 will render 8 images at once. After that, it will render another set of 8 images in a second run. Down here is CFG scale. This parameter essentially dictates the level of creative liberty you give the AI during image generation. A higher value bestows more freedom while a lower value reigns it in. I recommend starting with a range between 7 and 13. Feel free to experiment to find what works best for your artistic vision. So what is seed? Every image generated has a unique seed. If you input identical prompts and the same seed, Stable Diffusion will produce the same image. This is due to its deterministic nature. The script dropdown is your gateway to executing specific scripts. One very useful script is XYZ plot. Click on the script dropdown and select XYZ plot. For the X axis, choose Sampler. Click the book icon to the right. This will load all available samplers. Select CFG scale for the Y axis. For value type 5 to 14 plus 1. This implies that for each sampler we will render the image 10 times, incrementing the CFG scale by 1 with each render. Don't forget to set your batch size to 1. Otherwise you will get a lot of images. Here you can witness how each sampler operates and how the CFG scale influences image generation. There's a vast playground for experimentation here. Personally, I mostly use DPM++ to MKRS for its swift rendering and appealing results. Euler A is another good choice, though it can yield vast different outcomes with certain prompts. Now, let's increase the quality of your renders further in this video.